take a few moments and explain to you why it's important to ensure that your transformers are phased. Basically what that means is that the red terminal on one transformer is the same polarity as the red terminal on the other transformer. Uh, this is uh, true for all transformers on the railroad. As we get into this series, we'll talk about how we can activate accessories with, with an insulated outside rail. In a scenario like that, it's very important that the transformers be phased. And all that basically means is that the plug that the transformer is plugged into, or the socket that the transformer is plugged into, is consistent between both transformers. Basically the way this works is you, you have your AC waveform that for simplicity's sake looks like this. This represents zero, this is positive DC, this is negative DC, but since we have alternating current, we alternate back and forth between plus and minus 60 times a second in the United States, 50 times a second in Europe and overseas. Let's assume that this waveform is this transformer here, and we need to verify that the waveform on this transformer coming out of these terminals matches this. The way that this is done, we'll explain in a moment. Let's get through the theory. This is our CW80. And we're going to draw our power max down here. What we want to have happen is our power max matches this same waveform. So it comes down and does the same thing that we do on our CW80. So that our positive and our negative match on this transformer. That means that they'll be in phase. If they're out of phase, what will happen is what comes out of the red terminal on the 40 watt versus what comes out of the red terminal on the 80 watt, they'll both be positive or they'll both be negative. If you can't complete the circuit, the accessory won't work, the light will not light up. So to do this, I'm going to show you right now how this is done. I'd like to take a few moments and explain to you the importance of phasing your transformers uh, for your railroad. It's important to note that with a typical light, as a simple example, we have a light bulb. It has two leads. One lead gets positive or hot power if we're dealing with AC, and the other side which would be the return, gets minus or AC ground. When you have hot and ground powering the lamp, the lamp illuminates. Because we're working with AC in a three rail application, we're dealing with a sine wave, where this straight line represents zero. Above the zero crossing is plus, below the zero crossing is minus. This is an alternating waveform, also known as alternating current. In the United States, this alternates back and forth 60 times a second. In Europe and other countries overseas, it alternates at 50 times a second. That's the difference between 50 hertz versus 60 hertz. So here in the States, we have 60 hertz AC power. We have two terminals on our transformer. We have a red and we have a black. When the red terminal is on the high side of the zero cross, the black terminal is on the low side of the zero cross and vice versa. When red is then on the low side, black is on the high side. When we're using two transformers, to control something such as an insulated outside rail to activate a cross buck or a banjo signal, what we're actually doing is we're powering the track with one transformer and that's variable to control our train and we're controlling the cross buck, the power to the cross buck with a separate transformer that's fixed. 
So a fixed 14 volts powering the cross buck that's turned on through the ground side of the variable voltage transformer for, that's running our train. In order for this to work, the transformers need to be in phase. And all that that means is that the common output on your track transformer matches the common output on your accessory transformer. If the voltage, if the sine wave is off or it's out of sync or out of phase, what's going to happen is that when the train enters the block to activate the accessory, the accessory, instead of seeing hot and ground, is going to see two hots or it's going to see two grounds, at which point the accessory will not activate. So to ensure that our accessories activate, we need to ensure that all of our transformers are phased together. We're going to show you how to do that now. Phasing our transformers is very simple. What we need are two wires with the ends of the wire stripped. We connect one end of the wire to the black terminal on our variable voltage on our 80 watt transformer. And we connect the other end to the black terminal on our accessory transformer. You'll notice that while we're doing this, the power to the track is off. Our handles are in the off position. We've got the black wire connected between the black terminals on each transformer. We now take a second wire, which we're using red to keep it simple. We connect the red wire to our track transformer. Take the other red wire to the red terminal on here. Now before we do that, we want to turn our track voltage on to basically the same amount of voltage, same position on the handle. We're going to take the red wire from the red terminal on our track transformer and we're going to touch it to our accessory transformer. There's no spark. That's a good thing. If we did happen to see a spark, what we would know is that these two transformers are out of phase. So let's go ahead and intentionally do it wrong so I can show you what that looks like. We're going to take our black wire from our black terminal and connect it to red. Again, we're doing this wrong intentionally for demonstration purposes. <clears throat> I've got black from this transformer to the red terminal on our accessory transformer. Turn our voltage up about the same. I'm going to take the red wire and touch it to the black terminal down here on our accessory transformer. See the light starts blinking? That's telling me that there's a short. There's a short because right now I'm showing the transformers as being out of phase. They're out of phase because I have common or ground on my track transformer connected to AC hot on my accessory transformer. So let's go ahead and correct that. So I've got black wire to my accessory transformer on the black terminal to the black terminal on my track transformer. Take the red wire from the red terminal on track for my track transformer, touch it to red on my accessory transformer, my light stays on solid, my transformers are in phase. What this means for me is that I can take a lamp, I can connect one lead to the red terminal on my accessory trans or on my track transformer, and I can touch it to the ground terminal on my accessory transformer, and the light will illuminate. Basically, what we've done is we've completed the circuit through two separate transformers getting AC hot from this transformer and AC ground from this transformer. What this will do for us now is when we have accessories connected to our accessory transformer, our fixed 14 volt AC hot supply powering our accessories, and we use an insulated outside rail on our track, the train then completes the ground circuit, which ground is coming from this transformer, 
our accessory will turn on. And we're actually going to demonstrate that for you here momentarily. It's very important that all your transformers stay in phase. And it's very important that you keep this ground wire connected between the ground terminals on each transformer on your railroad. This way, everything's in phase. You use a common ground throughout your entire railroad. All the outside rails of each track are all connected. The ground or the U or the common connection on your transformers are all connected, which will lend really nicely for when you add legacy or TMCC to your railroad in the future. Okay, let's go ahead and also uh, phase this transformer in here. Now that we know both of these are in phase, let's get this one in the mix as well. So we'll turn our throttles off. We're going to add a second wire to our ground side. Now you'll notice that on our 1.4 amp accessory transformer, we don't have a determination or a, or a designation of red and black here. So this is going to be a great example of how we determine whether or not they're in phase. We're going to guess. We're going to take the black terminal or black wire from the black terminal on both transformers to one of the posts. We're then going to increase the voltage. I'm going to use this wire, because I know this is in phase, I'm going to touch here and look for a spark. While I don't see a spark, I also don't know if it's uh, working or not. So let's connect the wire and try a light bulb. There's no external designation on this accessory transformer to tell us whether or not we have a short. So I'm going to use our lamp. And this is just a 18 volt lamp, grain of wheat bulb. Uh, this can be picked up through Lionel Customer Service. Uh, you can pick it up at a Radio Shack or something similar. We're going to take the one lead and touch it to one terminal. We're going to take the other lead and go to the ground on our accessory transformer. And the light came on just momentarily there. And the light bulb lights up. That tells us that all three transformers are now in phase. I've got a black wire tying the ground output on my track transformer to the ground output on my accessory transformer to the other ground output on my second accessory transformer. Take the red wire off. What this means, because these transformers are in phase, is that I can use this transformer to power accessories, this transformer to power accessories, and this transformer to power my train. Any of the accessories that are triggered off of an insulated outside rail will all work just fine. Let's take a few moments and show you how to do an insulated outside rail accessory activation. Okay, so what we have here is a CW80 Power Max and a 1.4 amp uh, accessory transformer. I want to show you the differences between running your accessories off of just the track power versus having two transformers in phase using a fixed voltage supply to operate your accessories and using the insulated outside rail to turn that accessory on and off. So what we have here is a 6-12029 accessory activator pack. Uh, this is designed specifically for fast track. And all that it really is, is two pieces of 5-inch straight track that has a gap on the outside rail. And what that means is the power from this rail is not transferred to this rail. The same holds true on the other section. So what's important is that you put this gapped rail on the same side of the track that you're connecting it to that has the, the black wire connected to it. So we can see here the black wire is connected to the rail, outside rail on that side. So as we flip it over, it would be this rail that is electrically isolated. So we'll put our accessory activator sections in with the gapped rail on this side. 
so that it matches the same rail that the wire is connected to. We'll do the same over here. So my gapped rails on my 5 inch straights are both on the same side that the wire is connected to. Effectively what we've done is we've created a switch. A simple on off switch like the light switch in a room. We also grab another section of straight track. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leads from my track and I'm going to connect them to the railroad or the track I should say. So transformer to the track. I'm now going to place just a truck that has standard lino metal wheels on it. I'm going to turn my voltage up all the way. When my train, when the wheels cross this gap, the circuit will be completed to this accessory, the light will come on and the gates will go down. Now I'm using the variable voltage output just using power right off the center rail. Because I'm running my train with this output, I'm going to be increasing and decreasing voltage. And you can see what happens to the accessory, the inconsistency of its operation depending upon how fast or slow I'm running the train. Now this will get you by in a pinch, but to make this accessory operate more reliably, it's better that we run this accessory off of a fixed voltage on either the CW80 or our accessory transformer. CW80 does have accessory posts that we can run this accessory off of, but we're assuming the railroad's growing, so we're going to use our accessory transformer. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wire that's currently connected to the center rail of this track. We're going to disconnect it and we would cut it, make sure that it doesn't create a short. We're going to take the red wire from our accessory transformer and connect it to our accessory. Now what we can do is we can turn on the power, track power, Move the truck so that it's sitting in the isolated rail section and turn, this ex turn the accessory transformer on until it gets to a voltage where we're happy with. So we'll say right there. We're going to leave that fixed. Now what happens, the train leaves the block, it gets beyond the insulated rail, accessory turns off. If our train happens to be off and we move our train into the block, the accessory still activates, even though our train is at a complete standstill because track power is off. What we've done is we've completed the circuit using a separate standalone transformer, taking the 14 volts AC from our accessory transformer to our accessory. We've completed the circuit by taking ground through the insulated rail. When the truck enters the block, it transfers the power from this rail to the insulated rail, thus completing the ground circuit, but the ground is coming from the black terminal on our track transformer, not our accessory transformer. But because our transformers are in phase and we have the black terminals connected between all of our transformers, the accessory activates even when the throttle is off. One more time. I can do whatever I want with my train throttle and my accessory activates reliably each and every time. As the train passes and leaves the block, the accessory turns off. Now I can make this block as long as I want. I can buy additional insulated outside rail sections uh, used to extend it 10 inches at a time. If I have a curved section where I want to continue the insul I want the I want the gate to stay down when I'm in a curve. We can show you a quick and easy way to modify a regular piece of track section to make that possible. Um, very simple operation, all achieved through having phasing between all of our transformers. Common mistake made by a lot of uh, enthusiasts is 
when they want to extend the insulated outside rail section of the, uh, of the activation area, what they'll do is they'll take a regular piece of 10 inch straight or an 036 curve and try to add it into the equation. That becomes a problem because each section of curve and each section of straight both have a bus bar that connects the two outside rails to one another. Holds true on straights as well as curves. Also on smaller uh, five inch, four and a half, one and three quarter, one and three eighth inch straights. Uh, most all of them have that uh, common rail connection. So let me go ahead and add this into our equation so I can show you what happens. Have our accessory voltage on. As soon as I plug this section of track in, our accessory is going to activate. Now this is going to seem like it's a problem. It's a problem created by the user because these two outside rails are tied together all the time. Very simple way to correct this. If you're trying to extend your accessory activation area, simply remove this bus bar. Let me show you on a piece of curve track because currently in our product lineup we don't offer a piece of curve that you can use on a uh, insulated activation rail section. So to do this we're simply going to use a small flathead screwdriver and a pair of pliers. And all we're going to do is remove this bar. And this is done by simply prying up the, the metal that holds the rail down. Lifting that bus bar out of there. Then make sure that we pry these back down so our rail doesn't loosen up over time. And repeat the process for this terminal. And once again, push those pieces down so our rail stays tight. Now what we have is both outside rails are electrically isolated because we've moved the ground bar. We have removed the ground bar. So now what we're going to do is put this piece of curve track into our insulated rail section. Finish it off. If you remember this is our 5 inch section with the gapped outside rail. The other 5 inch section with the gapped outside rail. Our activation section now goes from here through the 10 inch straight, through the curve, to this gap here. Turn the accessory voltage back on, take our truck representing our train, this stays down throughout the entire curve until we leave the gap on this side. Simple way to make uh, additional sections of insulated uh, uh, block rail. The insulated block rail is available separately if you don't want to pull the bus bar out. A uh, very simple way to activate accessories using the phasing of two transformers, a fixed supply powering our accessory, and a variable supply controlling our track.